I looked around the world because you know what? You've heard people here tell you that carbs cause diabetes, and yet when you look at the blue zones, they eat extremely high carbohydrate diets. When you look at the EPIC database, fructose is associated with a decrease in diabetes, and in fact, taking 5% of your saturated fatty acid and changing it to fructose decreases your diabetes risk by 30%. They're confused by the guidelines, and they're confused by the discussions here, and they're confused by bad science. So I ask you to look at the science very carefully. Uh, I totally agree. Hi, Dr. Eric Westman here with another episode of Dr. Westman Reacts. Today I'm going to talk about a video sent to me, Why I Quit Pushing Low Carb Diet by Dr. Garth Davis. Of course, you want to consider the source of any information. This is from Plant-Based News, which has received a plant-based bias. Not that it can't work and not that it's healthy for some people, but they generally have a one-sided view of things. And then Garth Davis is interesting. I, I've known his name through the years. I've ne never met him, uh, even though I'm past president of the Obesity Medicine Association, which is the largest group of medical weight loss doctors. He is a metabolic surgery. Well, they changed their name from bariatric surgery to metabolic surgeons as well to show that they could fix diabetes, reverse diabetes, which is true. You can do that with weight loss surgery. So he's a, a metabolic and bariatric weight loss surgeon. And I know he was in Houston for a long time, I guess, in Asheville, North Carolina, up the street from me, from Duke uh, now, or, or back and forth. But he's been pretty vocal against keto diets and pretty promotional for plant-based diets. And in this video, let, let's see what logic he uses in terms of uh, why I quit pushing low-carb diets. Uh, what, the reason I, I go over these is you, you can start seeing themes of, of how the old paradigm can influence people's view of a new paradigm. And sometimes that's good and sometimes that's bad. So let, let's see what his argument is. Hi, my name is Garth Davis. I'm the medical director of weight management in Asheville, North Carolina, though I'm not here on part of my city, which would probably ask you to replace the milk recommendation with beer. I am a board certified weight loss surgeon and medical weight loss doctor. I've been treating obesity for 18 years and I am begging this committee to please put me out of business. I am tired of cutting people open for obesity and rearranging their intestines. And I think it's absolutely ridiculous that it's 2019 and we have a group of very smart people in this room, yet we are asking what we should be eating. It's absolutely crazy. And I'll tell you what, my patients are confused. They're confused by the guidelines and they're confused by the discussions here and they're confused by bad science. So I ask you to look at the science very carefully. Uh, I totally agree. So surgeons have a different mentality, uh, weight loss surgeons, but some people need it. If you can't avoid all of the sugar and ultra processed food out there, then we'll just go in and rearrange your intestines. I mean, he gets very graphic about what he does. I remember giving a, a lecture once and a metabolic weight loss surgeon came up and corrected me that the size of the pouch after a ruin Y isn't just the size of an egg. It's the size of a hen's egg because I mean, they're different types of eggs. Well, so, okay, if you, if you need to, so my philosophy is let me teach you not to have the sugar and ultra processed foods and, you know, like an umbrella, I can teach you not to have them and you won't get them in your system. You can burn your own body fat or you could go in, be a surgeon and rearrange the intestines so that if you do consume something, it's either not very much or it just goes through to the other end or you don't you don't absorb and and digest it very well. It's a different philosophy and and some people do great with metabolic weight loss surgery. Don't don't get me wrong, but if you think that's going to be the entire answer forever, it, it, it's no, it's not commonly you have to at one time then after that having surgery address the food. And so that's why you have surgeons like Dr. Davis talking about food because their answer or their, their tool, their technique of surgery is not the long-term answer for most people. So you have to at some point address the food. And that's why I, I believe he's at a panel here. Uh, maybe it looks like it's even up at the USDA in Washington, DC, when the guideline panels, and we all are critical of the guidelines. In fact, I, I'd rather there be no guideline uh, the way the guidelines can mess up industrial and, and 
uh, school foods, that sort of thing. But uh, let's see now um, and continue. Because I did. I wrote a book saying we should be eating protein first and we should be on ketosis diets. But you know what happens to these ketosis patients? They end up eventually on my operating room table when they failed this diet over and over again. We <laughs> Is that good logic? Because uh, they fail the diet and they end up for weight loss surgery, therefore you shouldn't teach the diet. Some people it's a great fit to do a keto diet. Some people it's not a great fit. If you have a sugar and ultra processed food addiction and you never address that, or if it turns out you can't do a keto diet because you can't give up the potatoes, pasta, rice, fruit, you know, my fruit. If you can't give up those things, you may be addicted to these foods. And, and if you can't give them up, it's not that the diet failed. It's that you're an addict. And if you end up in the surgery table, Dr. Davis, it's not because the diet failed, it's because they're still eating the foods that are causing the problem in the first place. And in, the, in that case, either you redouble the efforts like I do in my office, I, I say, well, you know, you got off track the first time, that's okay. Did you learn to ride a bike the first time? You know, no, you know, I fell, well, the problem with that is someone looked at me and she said, I never learned to ride a bike. Okay, so that's not a great metaphor, but so for everyone, but you know, it takes several attempts. And if you really understand where the problem is coming from, you want to keep trying. You know, if the only way you could get from point A to point B is to ride a bike, you would keep trying to learn how to ride that bike. You know, even if you fell and you hurt yourself and you got up the next few days. But I tell you, after teaching, at least three children how to ride bikes, the look in their eye and, and when they get it, they don't need the teacher anymore. They're gone down the street. So, and, and that's the whole point is we want to teach and have people learn how to do this, how to uh, uh, eat great food and be healthy. So, I, I you know, I'm, I bet Dr. Davis, uh, many of your patients have failed many different diets and end up on your, your table. As the past president of the Obesity Medicine Association, there are also medications that can be used before surgical attempts. So, you know, if you're thinking about weight loss surgery and, and everyone else has done it and you think it's the only thing, no, think again. We have prescription strength diets. We have prescription strength drugs. There are even very low calorie diet programs you can purchase from doctors. So find a medical weight loss doctor to do something. It doesn't have to be the keto diet, but that logic that they end up on his table, well, you know, that, that doesn't dissuade me from teaching you and, and instructing you to stay on a low carb keto diet if it has clicked for you. But let's see what else he has to say. Talk about it all the time. So I eventually went back and said, why am I failing the ketosis diet and why are my patients failing? And I studied this extensively. And I well, so this, this I, I, sorry, Dr. Davis, this is kind of the classic if it didn't work for the doctor, it's not going to work for you. And one of my patients came back saying, um, you know, my cardiologist told me to eat more quinoa. And he looked at me and he said, what's a quinoa? You know, so just because one thing can work for the doctor or doesn't work for the doctor doesn't mean it can't work for other people and it isn't right. But often we, uh, we were, you know, it's hard to get out of our own personal experience at times. Uh, but that logic I've seen so many times, well, nobody can stay on it, which is, means the doctor is saying, projecting, I couldn't stay on it, so therefore you can't stay on it. Well, you know, teach him, teach him how to do it. You know, what, what, what doctor would say, you know, I know you've quit smoking and that's great, but you know, no one can stay, stop smoking. And when you go back to smoking, let me know because we have drugs for you. And uh, no, if you're following something that's working and, and uh, or if you haven't found something yet that's working, it may be that something like a diet that uses nutritional ketosis might be a, a way to go. But so that logic doesn't, doesn't uh, persuade me. I looked around the world because you know what? You've heard people here tell you that carbs cause diabetes, and yet when you look at the blue zones, they eat extremely high carbohydrate diets. When you look at the EPIC database, fructose is associated with a decreased diabetes, and in fact, taking 5% of your saturated fatty acid and changing it to fructose decreases your diabetes risk by 30%. People say... Yeah, so this is so common in the non-keto, non-obesity medicine world. It's actually a medical sub subspecialty that, um, well, because some people can eat carbs, therefore it's not a cause. Well, so <laughs> it, 
seems to me that the, of course, the type of carbohydrate matters, but the amount of food matters, the caloric content matters. So going back to the history of the diet programs in Durham, North Carolina at Duke University, where I work, the diet industry, at one time there were three residential programs in Durham where people would come from all over. I worked at one for a couple of years part-time and got to, to meet people from all over, uh, changing their lifestyles. It's really what got me you know, energized into using lifestyle as a treatment and not medication. I worked at the Duke Diet and Fitness Center some years ago, the residential program. Now that doesn't exist anymore, the residential side. The outpatient side still works. And, and then the rice diet, where it all started in Durham, doesn't exist either. I'll even meet people today who say, oh yeah, that rice diet, that's in Durham. No, it doesn't exist anymore. They closed the doors, they wrapped that up. And, but the, the, the method worked because it was super low calorie. So if, if you have rice, yeah, it was rice, fruit, and fish. It was, it, the, so you get your protein from the fish on the classically trained rice diet, and you cut the calories at you know 800 per day, which for most people, 99% of people, maybe not for the postmenopausal sedentary uh, female, but the 800 calories a day is gonna make everyone lose weight. So it's a low calorie diet. So I have to think around the world even today, and if you read the blue zones, it's more complicated, more nuanced than just diet. There are a lot of other things going on in areas where people live uh, for a long time. The idea of the blue zones is these people commonly live to 100 years old. You can read the book and kind of like a, a Rorschach print, the, the psychology ink blot. You can kind of see what you want to see in the blue zones books. Um, and uh, so anyway, yes, you can eat carbs and not get diabetes, but when you're over, that's when you don't have a hypercaloric intake, meaning you're eating more than you're burning for the day. So uh, the other uh, interesting thing about the papers and really they're apples and oranges. If you, if you study people who eat carbs, sure. The, if you have different types of carbs, there's less of a, a risk of diabetes, uh, diabetes. I don't want you to have diabetes at all. So when you get outside that, you know, let's study people who eat carbs. When you study people who don't eat carbs, there's no diabetes at all. The risk is gone. So to say that you can have carbs and it just and it lowers the risk, or have fructose, I think was the example. I'm not talking about a reduction in risk. I want to eliminate your risk. So we're actually off the scale on what was studied in those studies. But these are classic arguments you're going to hear by people who have just one point of view and they're trying to promote one point of view. I want you to understand that there's more going on here. There are a lot of ways to be healthy. And, and it, actually, if you're following what Dr. Davis says, great. If, if everything's healthy, you're, you feel great and, and the parameters look good. I can't say that there's no head-to-head -head trial of a low-carb keto diet versus an ultra-low-fat plant-based diet to say one's better than another. Someone says one's better than another, they're talking about theory, they're talking about observational studies, they're not talking about experimental studies because those don't exist yet. I'd love to do one, but uh, so back to Dr. Davis. People say insulin resistance and acting as if carbs cause insulin resistance. That is not true. Animal protein and animal fat causing intramyocellular fat, causing ceramide toxicity, causes insulin resistance. So this is, you've heard this before. If you've heard me review the, that classic two-liner, yeah, that's one cause of insulin resistance. The, the, however, you get intramyocellular fat, but that actually can come from carbohydrates as well. So carbohydrates raise your ability, your body's ability to make fat in the liver, then it gets exported all the way around, around the body and you increase the intramyocellular fat by having excessive carbohydrates, not just excessive fat. And, and so there are a lot of ways to improve things. If, again, if you did the rice diet, which is ultra low calorie and it's mostly carbs, yes, you can fix all these things. If you did weight loss surgery, like Dr. Garth Davis does, people don't eat for a while after the surgery. They, they have total fasting or, or almost total fasting. And then the way weight loss surgery works, you can argue that it's a metabolic change inside, but the end point is that people don't eat much. So it's all about the, the food in terms of 
making change for, for weight loss and for sustainable weight loss. So that, that idea that intramyelocellular fat causes insulin resistance, great, yeah. But carbs raise the insulin, insulin raises the intramyelocellular fat. You take the carbs down, the insulin comes down, the intramyelocellular fat goes down too. It just works by a different method. But our patients don't know that, so all they hear is protein, carbs, protein, carbs. I think it's crazy that I have to go and order a salad, complete with beans and all kinds of things, and the waiter asked me if I'd like protein with my salad. Well, how ridiculous is that? There's protein in my salad. The poor teenager who then hears me ask these questions to him just says, hey, look, I'm working a summer job. But this is what all my patients are dealing with. They don't know whether to go low carb. They don't know whether to go low fat. They're petrified of a banana. You could hold up a bank with a piece of bread. People are so scared of carbs. And it's ridiculous when you go to Okinawa and they're eating sweet potato and rice. And I'll tell you that my practice... Remember, they're not having much, even though they're having sweet potato and rice. And you may be surprised that my latest thinking, and even though I've been on several books, my latest book actually has several carbohydrate levels in it. I don't just recommend keto diets for everyone for life, but if you're trying to do a keto diet and trying to stay on one, then you want to avoid sweet potatoes and rice and eat the, the wide array of, of proteins and fats that you can and, and have a delicious uh, lifestyle as well. So there are a lot of ways to do it. But um, so I guess he was saying that the, there was protein on his salad because there were beans on the salad. And people are assuming that you have to have meat to get protein. And although that's a great way to get protein. And I have to agree again w with Dr. Davis that we don't teach people, the general public, we don't teach even medical practitioners much about nutrition. And it is confusing, but you can drive on the right-hand side of the road in this country. It works great. There's certain rules. You stay to the right of the line. You know, you get in the car on the, the what, the, the left side. But then you can go to a country where they drive on the left-hand side of the road. You, you drive, stay to the left side of the line and, and, and you, and it's kind of weird if you drive in the other country because you're used to one way of doing it. So there, yeah, there may be different rules. There may be different ways to do things that might be confusing. With my patients, what else? Say, you know, if you're following a lifestyle that, that you like and it's working for you, like different cars, are, do, you, do you go and buy a new car, you know, every day? I mean, are you searching on the internet for a new car every day? Like a new diet every day trying to find? No, most people don't. <laughs> you purchase the car, you know, you even drive down where all the dealerships are and you're not, you know, like, oh, I need a new one. I need, it's like many of my patients, I say, look, turn off the internet. You're doing great. There's nothing, you know, I will tell you when there's something new to add on to what you're already doing. So don't be distracted by the latest, you know, uh, do hickey on the car that, you know, I, so I don't know, or maybe you do want new cars every, every six months, a new diet every six months, even though what's worked for you in, has worked and will work for you as time goes on. Um, I, I don't know if, if what's what you, the car you're driving is working for you stay with it <laughs> this is my life has changed over the years why I no longer tell people they're not allowed to come in and tell me what macronutrient they're eating they're only tell me what plants they're eating what foods they're eating I want a whole food plant-based diet so I asked the committee uh, 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 there's whole food plant-based diet. it's fine you know but you know the the idea that you're gonna promote and change everyone to do it um, well, if you go to Wikipedia and look up Dr. Davis, you, you can, you know, check, of course, vet the, where the information is coming from. It's pretty clear on there that he's a a, a plant-based uh, supporter and advocate, and and um, and then in there, of course, is the animal rights activist uh, element to it. But you know, I, I've seen people think they're eating to save the planet when actually they're harming themselves. And that's tragic to see because because it never occurred to someone that eating plants would be bad for them because it's saving the planet and every, and everyone says it's the best thing to do well it's not the best thing to do for everyone health wise so uh, you know if what you're doing isn't working consider maybe trying something new uh, but uh, one difference in the kind of low carb research world is we don't proselytize and say everyone needs to do it 
what we teach is the foundational principles of you want to keep glucose and insulin low and there are a lot of ways to do that even you could live in okinawa and, and eat sweet potatoes and rice uh, but you, you know you want to get some protein too and they do eat protein when you look at the actually what they eat and they eat animal products there too so there's stretching the the you know observations to suit the conclusion that they want to make. But um, so let's see what Dr. Davis concludes with. Of the recommendation for a protein and rather focus on whole foods. The questions out there are complicated, but the answer is simple. And I refer to Michael Pollan. Eat real foods, mostly plants, not too much. Thank you. A very persuasive doctor and uh, a surgeon who doesn't want to operate. Um, uh, and, uh, of course, you know, does. <laughs> Obviously, the tension there. If you really believed in the other ways, you, you might change what you do for a living. I, I, I don't know. I can't really comment on that. I'm still in a clinical practice teaching people how to do low-carb diets. Uh, same place I've been for the last 20 years now uh, at Duke. Um, what was interesting, he made reference to Michael Pollan. I, I should do a video on uh, Michael Pollan, who, who's not a doctor, he's a writer. And in a book that was very influential, and I think it, it's a good book, um, basically goes through uh, uh, the books called The Omnivore's Dilemma. And, you know, so the, a human is an omnivore. You could eat plants, you could eat meat, you could eat combinations of all of them, and uh, which I think is generally true. But he goes through the book and then ends up with an illogical conclusion. It's like reading a paper where the conclusion isn't really what they said in the results of the paper. And you'll see this. It's very odd. Um, even, even from NIH scientists, there'll be a, a, a paper that says, you know, clearly that, you know, a low carb diet leads to a metabolic advantage, a change in calories. And at the end, it'll say, well, the, it wasn't a big change. You know, even though there was a change, it was statistically significant too. Well, so uh, in the book, The Omnivore's Dilemma, basically the, it's pretty clear. You could eat meat, you could eat vegetables. It doesn't matter where your proteins and fats come from. And then at the end, he concludes, eat mostly plants. But it's not in the book. <laughs> the, 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 it, it's not a logical conclusion of that book. So that, I thought that was kind of odd. Um, I'm thinking that it, it had to fit into the... Um, the kind of mainstream thinking today, uh, if you are too far outside the kind of zeitgeist of the moment, people aren't going to watch you. They're not going to, you know, pick up uh, you as an influencer as well. So, um, and so in general, you know, Dr. Davis uh, is a, a surgeon, a vocal plant-based guy. His evidence here for not doing keto diets was basically that it doesn't work for everyone and it didn't work for him. That's not good enough information for me to tell you to change from doing a keto diet. I hope that's helpful. You know, if you like this, be sure to like, be sure to subscribe and ring the notification bell. Send it to a friend. It's a grassroots movement, and I am so happy to be able to uh, give you this information. Thank you. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell, and check out adapterlifeacademy.com.